So in this video we are going to talk about the Sangam age which is undisputedly the most important topic in the history of South India. So we will start this video with the introduction of Sangam age then we will see the sources of information at how do we get to know about this Sangam period then we will see the society in Sangam age their lifestyle their occupation etc then we will have a look on the economy in Sangam age agriculture trade foreign trade etc sources of revenue so we'll start with the introduction of sangam age so the sangam age stretches from 3rd century bc to 4th century ad it is a period of history of ancient tamil nadu kerala and parts of sri lanka so reasons here concerned are tamil nadu kerala parts of sri lanka as well as some parts of karnataka too this sangam period is divided into three phases first sangam second sangam and third sangam when we call first sangam means the whole first sangam period when we call second sangam means the whole second sangam period and the major kingdoms ruled the sangam territory during this sangam age were cholas pandyas and cheras and this sangam age is distinctively popular for the scholarly development and madurai was one of the most famous center for the gathering of sangam poets and the scholarly development so the sangam poets were centered in the madurai and it is also one of the famous scholarly city of south india now coming to the sources of information so first we have literary sources in the literary sources we have whole set of sangam literature which consists of earliest tamil works like tolakappiyam patiru pattu eight anthologies which are known as etu gothai and apart from that we also have 18 minor works and five epics which include silapaddikaram a uh, story of love triangle the first sangam the first sangam means the whole first sangam period was supposed to have been held at madurai that means all the developments which has been done during this period were centered around the madurai and when we talk about the development it means the scholarly development as well as cultural development so the first sangam was supposed to have been held at madurai under the guidance of famous scholar agastya tamil grammar that followed the first sangam was agatyam which was authored by agastya and then at kapattupuram the second sangam was held under the tolaka pr tolaka pr was the disciple of agastya and he was also the author of tolaka pr which was one of the earliest work in tamil grammar so it was also composed during the second sangam period now coming to the third sangam period so third sangam was held under nakirar at madurai and the most celebrated work in the entire sangam literature which is tirukural was composed by thiruvalluvar during this third sangam only and this thirukural is also known as the bible of tamil land that is why thiruvalluvar is considered to be one of the most divine poet of the whole sangam period okay then we have agatyam and tolakappiyam which were the text on grammar that were followed after the third sangam till the end of later chola period okay the sangam poets were both tamil men and women so there was no patriarchal dominance in the scholarly development the sangam poets were both tamil men as well as the women now coming to the archaeological sources so in this archaeological sources we have whole set of megaliths these megaliths can be in the form of dolmens cist cairn urns uh, when we talk about dolmen so here is the image of dolmen dolmen is basically a uh, three upright slabs covering three sides with a capstone on top here you can see three upright slabs covering a stone on the top then we have cist it is a box like grave it is usually built with two stone slabs on each side for the burial of the dead uh, there is also a capstone like this on the top then we have cairn this is a heap of stone here you can see the heap of stone a cairn is a heap of stone rubble filled up as a memorial most often the circular enclosure is formed by groups of rough stone this is basically a natural then we have urn urn is basically a tall rounded vase with arrow neck and foot pedestal along with the skeleton this is basically related to graves and the burials a number of things were kept at the time of funeral the pottery which is called as iron age pottery the sangam age pottery here you can see in the graveyards the people are basically excavating and we have also found many iron age pottery from these urns so these were some of the archaeological sources apart from that we also have the menhir so menhir is basically a single rough stone placed vertically like you can see in this image this is placed vertically uh, on the grave or near to it this can be small or huge in the size and then we have hero stone hero stone means erected stones to remember some memorable hero here you can see this is a hero stone and some hero stones till the date 
आर स्टिल रिस्पेक्टेड एंड रिगार्डेड एंड वर्शिप तो इवन टूडे अ हीरो स्टोन मेमोरियल लुकिंग लाइक अ विलेज टेम्पल इज रिस्पेक्टेड एंड वर्शिप एंड दिस हैज लेड टू अ कल्ट ऑफ विलेज गॉड्स इन द सदर्न इंडिया सो दिस इज बेसिकली द होल सेट ऑफ आर्कियोलॉजिकल एविडेंस वी हैव रिगार्डिंग द संगम पीरियड नाउ वेन वी टॉक अबाउट द सोसाइटी इन संगम एज फर्स्ट वी विल हैव अ लुक ऑन द सोशल क्लासिफिकेशन दैट विदर द वर्ल्ड व्यवस्था एग्जिस्टेड वर्ल्ड सिस्टम एग्जिस्टेड और नॉट सो तमिल people did not follow either the varna system or the ashram system which was popular in north but there were division in the tamil society and they were aravyars aravyars included the sages and they were given higher status even than the brahmins then comes the velalar they were the aristocratic class who owned huge tracts of land then there were uzavars who were the small peasants and then at the bottom were veduvars which included shepherds landless laborers goldsmiths carpenters etc Apart from all these yavan the foreigners like the shaka were also found in the large numbers so this was basically the social classification during the sangam age now coming to the lifestyle so war seems to be the most favored occupation of rich people but music and dancing also appeals to all the sections of sangam period karikala which was a famous artist of the period is called the master of seven notes of music sa re ga ma pa da ni The wealthy people lived in the houses of bricks and mortar. Their houses were well mortared, but the ordinary people dwelt in simple houses. But the poor, they had even worse condition. The poor people, the outcasts, and the forest tribals lived in the huts. There were a lot of popular customs and belief. There were a lot of superstitions. People had so much faith in omens and astrology, and that is why the fortune tellers and the astrologers did have a very good business, very good flourishing business. now coming to the position of women so the position of women the wife enjoyed a position of honor in the society it was around the wife the family grew the condition of widows was pathetically terrible polygamy was practiced but on a limited scale women the especially the royal women the elite women were fond of ornaments but poor women were only limited to do the agriculture and the spinning now coming to the dress and diets so dress was very simple a dhoti and turban was the male dress and the chief diet of sangam people was meat and rice so they consumed rice a lot now coming to the economy in the sangam age we will have a look on the agriculture first so agriculture was the main occupation the chief crops grown were rice cotton ragi ragi is also known as finger millet then we had sugar cane paper etc apart from the agriculture they also used to do spinning weaving ship building metal working carpentry rope making and tanning the marketplace was called avanam so avana was a term used for the marketplace in the sangam literature in the sangam period agriculture was done mostly by the poor women while the velalar owned the land only and extracted the benefits out of the efforts of poor women agriculture somehow developed sufficiently with the help of canal irrigation so canal irrigation was there because of paucity in the rainfalls now we had trade So with the trade, first of all, many towns grew like Puhar, who was a coastal town, Oriyar, Avanji, Tondi, Musiri, Madurai, Kanchi, etc. All were located in the southern India. When it comes to internal trade, salt was an important article of trade, but coinage was not developed, so barter system was in practice. When it comes to foreign trade, the South India had trade contacts with Rome, Egypt, Arabia, as well as with China, Cambodia, Malaysia, Bali, Borneo, Java, and Sumatra, means Indonesia. when it comes to import and export so exports from india included paper paper was highly demanded in roman empire apart from paper ivory silk cotton diamond saffron precious stones tortoise shells were also exported and when it comes to import to india so india used to import topaz tin antimony crude glass copper lead wine wheat and red glass ware from the roman empire when it comes to the trade with rome so we have some evidence of roman gold and several coins in the southern india also the roman settlers in the tamil kingdoms proves that trade between the roman empire and southern india was there and apparent and these roman settlers are also can also be termed as yavan but towards the end of second century ad unfortunately the direct trade between rome and the south india declined but it again revived in the 4th century ad now when it comes to the sources of revenue first of all land tax was the most important source of revenue because agriculture was the prime occupation apart from that trade was also there and the toll tax and custom duties also contributed much in the coffers of the state that's all in this video thank you for watching have a great day